if you like us living in the middle of nowhere, you're probably going to have considered Starlink as your internet connection option. I've just got hold of a Generation 4 dish that I'm going to show you how to set up and install and get running smoothly. Uh, so if you've got any questions or anything you're not sure about, I know if it'll work for you. Hopefully, I can answer it. Inside the box, the mount, and also we've got the uh, a Starlink dish, which I'm assuming has got the router inside there as well. Without getting too much into the nitty gritty of it, it's basically low orbit satellites that give you internet that you can connect to absolutely anywhere in the world. I'm going to show you how easy it is to set up. Inside the box, we have got the dish, a dish, or a square plate. I've got some instructions. Don't need them. We've got router. We've got what looks like power supply. Another power supply. And you've also got the uh, Ethernet cable. I have no idea how long it is. We'll find out. The dish itself is pretty light. Seems to have a nice little stand on it as well. Router, yeah, it's quite tidy, clean. Looks like it sits horizontally, this one. The last one sat up vertically, which is a bit awkward. It looks like the power supply goes through the Ethernet jack, which is nice. So there's no separate power cables. Power supply in, dish Ethernet connection in, or it looks like two Ethernet connections, which is really nice. So you can uh, have two things connected through Ethernet, or you can connect up a switch or another separate router. Like for me, for example, I'm running a Google Wi-Fi mesh, so it's going to be really nice. I can just plug the Wi-Fi mesh straight into this thing rather than have to reset all the passwords and reset everything in the whole house. The other thing that you're probably going to need when setting up a link is Something to connect the dish to the roof with. So here I've got myself a little angle mount that connects to the side of the house. One downside about Starlink is the adapters are not cheap. 130 euros ish or 100 euros. Box of screws, some beefy bolts to screw it to your wall with. The silicon is for when you put the screws in. An adapter that goes underneath the dish. Now we've got various pole bits that stick to things. So this is the bit that's going to stick on the house. This bit will block into there. The dish adapter will connect it there. And this bit here is to keep the underneath nice and clean and tidy so it doesn't look ugly from underneath. I just picked up the instructions and I was correct, you really don't need these instructions. It basically says, put it on the ground, point it at the sky. Don't put it between the trees because that's going to block it. And the wiring of how it works, it's really not complicated. I've been running Gen 2 for about two years now. Um, I've been really happy with it. In the early days, it seemed to drop out for like microseconds, maybe half a second or something, every 10 seconds to every minute or so. Um, wasn't really noticeable when streaming, but I play a few online games and you do notice the little hiccups and disconnects um, through that. But that was in the early days when Starlink was just released and you could just get it here. Um, now, I run... Online games, I run streaming, I run all sorts of uh, sort of high high use internet needs. Um, and this thing always keeps me connected, always works well. So the only times I've had disconnects um, with the Starlink are in really, really bad, heavy sort of thunderstorms or snow storms, the sort of thick clouds. I think they cause a bit of interference. The dish has a warming feature. So 
on snow days, it will heat up and melt any snow to keep it from blocking the snow, which is pretty nice because we live in Norway and there's a lot of snow here, so it would be a bit useless living in a snowy climate with this thing if it couldn't get rid of the snow itself. It's pretty complicated how it works, but incredibly fascinating. I'm not going to go into it today because it takes forever to explain, but if you are interested, I can probably link a few videos that'll explain how these things work. So now we've opened it, we want to have a look at where we should install it. Um, it's not that complicated, basically the clearest view of the sky. I put ours on our roof. We've got a few trees in the area that are giving slight occlusions, but they don't seem to be causing that much of a problem. Recently, Starlink came up with a new upgrade, so I read. It can almost connect to multiple satellites at once, so that it's always got like a second one ready to connect to if the first one goes down. Uh, originally, it would connect to one satellite, follow it across the sky, and then when it would get blocked, it would then start looking around to see if you could find the next satellite. And once it found one, it would lock on and then you'd get a good connection. That's what these micro pauses were on the connection early on. Whereas now they seem to have had an upgrade and you don't seem to get them as much because it almost knows where the next satellite is. So as soon as one goes out of an obstruction, it'll quickly fire onto the next satellite and keep you connected all the time. So that's been really nice since that upgrade happened. Let's talk a little bit about why anybody would want to have Starlink, what it's good for and what it's not good for. What Starlink is good for is for people who live in places that don't have broadband. Um, if you're in an area that does have a fiber optic broadband, you're probably going to be better off with that thing. Um, it's always going to have faster internet speeds, where Starlink is still um, still improving. They're, they're launching the satellites all the time. Anyone who follows these Elon Musk, SpaceX launches. Uh, a lot of the launches that they're doing are new Starlink satellites. So there's there's a lot of them going up into the sky all the time. Um, and I've noticed a difference since we started this on how fast the internet speed has been. So, you know, give it another two or three years, who knows what kinds of speeds we'll be getting. The other nice thing is that there is a friend referral scheme going on at the moment. So. If you do have Starlink or you know somebody who's got Starlink, it's worth uh, going through the referral program because you both get one month free when you're doing that. Um, I'm going to throw my referral code in the bottom. So if you do decide to get Starlink and want to use my referral code, I'd be very happy. So shall we go and have a look outside at where this thing should go? Because we need a clear area of sky with no trees, no buildings, nothing covering it. Before I installed the dish, I decided to do a quick check to make sure it was working. Here you can see my old Generation 2 dish on the roof. While I had both dishes up and running, I thought it'd be fun to try a speed test. The test was done about a minute apart from each other, with the new Generation 3 being done first. I found the results really interesting, as both dishes are advertised to give roughly the same speeds. So I think I'm going to make another video about this. If you're interested, check it out. Another cool thing I noticed on the new dish when I'd set it up is you can see the lines of the paths of the satellites being drawn on the obstructions map. I thought it was kind of cool to be able to see where the satellites are going across the sky. So the dish has this stand on it. We need to take the stand completely off, which means you've got a little flap under here, which you can lift. You can see the little notches, so you lift up and then pull. Some. Before you start climbing any ladders, you're going to want to get the cable incorrect. I found the easiest thing to do was make sure the cable goes through the correct holes before I start mounting anything. I fit the cable through a little hole on the angle bracket first and then up into this hole here so it went through the pole. It's also worth noting this little screw on the side. This enables you to be able to twist the pole around so when the Starlink's on the roof you can 
rotate it to the left and the right. Then finally I fed it through the adapter hole and plugged it into the Starlink. This will make your life much easier later on as it's impossible to put the cable in once you put all the mounts on. Now when screwing your mount to the wall you just disconnect this little area here and screw it using the bolts provided to the roof. I used a socket wrench connecting it to the frame of the roof, careful not to just screw it to the batten boards as you need a good anchor point. I had already fed the cable through the hole in the angle mount. Looking back it probably wasn't necessary. So having the adapter and the pole connected to the Starlink with the wire fed through already, it made it really easy to just clamp the ladder and slot the pole onto the angle mount that was connected to the roof. From here, it's just a case of getting the direction correct. And then it's just a simple case of plugging it in. And if you can't figure that bit out, you probably shouldn't be doing this. Now it's time to find Starlink on your Wi-Fi list. Then you can open your Starlink app and see what's going on. It takes a little time for the calculations to finish but eventually it'll tell you what the alignment is like for your dish. That means you can get back up on your ladder and rotate your dish until you get the correct alignment. Then don't forget to tighten your little knob, otherwise it might misalign again, or the dish might fall off. At this stage, you can consider yourself officially online. You're probably going to need to do a software update and configure your network settings on the router. It's also worth doing a quick obstructions check as well to see what trees might be in the way or possibly which neighbours' houses you need to destroy. So, oh, if the video has been useful for you, throw me a like and put a comment down if there's anything I missed. And also, as mentioned before, I've got a 33 days of Starlink uh, code. So if you use that one, we both get 33 days. So that'd be really nice.